What's up? Oh, E3 I... 2017 keeps rolling on, and we've talked about EA, we've talked about Microsoft. You can check that out. That's up now. That's Vidya. Yeah. We're here to talk about Bethesda, so we're doing Bethesda here on Monday, uh, because they were on at midnight over on the East Coast where we are. It sucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, usually they're on at like 10 o'clock they have been the last two years, I think, which isn't bad, but like midnight, it was like, man, we were all kind of tired. But Yeah. So, but, this conference was a lot shorter than usual, so uh, we'll run down some stuff here. They talked, they opened up, talked about Doom uh, VFR and Fallout 4 VR, which, you know, both of those things are being in VR, I think, for Vive right now. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully, um, maybe to the PlayStation VR eventually. Maybe. Question mark? I don't know. Then they talked about Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind, which is out now, but they said there's some newer stuff coming to that. Then they talked about Creation Club, which is uh, kind of mod support stuff coming to consoles and PC. It's premium mods, basically. Yeah. Stuff you have to pay for. So, there you go. Elder Scrolls Legends is getting a Hero of Skyrim expansion June 29th. They then showed off Skyrim for the Switch, which has uh, Amiibo support. And motion control support. Yeah. You know, say something. Uh, well, I, I'll get to it later because we already passed it. So. Um, Dishonored Two's getting a uh, Death of the Outsider story uh, expansion standalone thing. I think uh, September fifteenth. Uh, Bj Blaskowitz from Wolfenstein's going to be in Quake Champions. Yes. The Evil Within Two got a nice trailer. Very confusing trailer, especially I guess if you haven't played the first game. That game's out. October 13th, and Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, is what they ended with, with which had a kind of lengthy trailer with, you know, some CG stuff, but also sets up, you know, what the story's going to be like for the next game, showed some gameplay, which I'm sure we'll talk about this game the most, uh, but that's out October 27th of this year, and that's it, that's all they talked about, they just kind of moved through their Bethesda land, and Pete Hines came up there, in the beginning, and then he came up there at the end, and then they were done. It was it was like what thirty seven minutes long, something like that. Wouldn't have been as frustrating if we didn't have to wait until I, midnight. I, I think so. It was just a fucking bummer because we waited so long, and then like we thought they were gonna do the oh and one more thing mm -hmm. and announce something big it, but they just ended on Wolfenstein too which is a cool looking game I'm very excited for it but that was kind of the bummer part it, it was just kind of an awkward ending yeah. because they, in the past few years they've given some big gameplay demo of Fallout 4 and Dishonored 2 and you thought that they would at least get behind Wolfenstein 2 a little bit more I don't know it's kind of awkward my whole opinion with this conference was like it seemed like everything was either there was like it was like oh it's a cool idea but then there's like just a detail about what they talked about that kind of brought it down in some ways for like most of the stuff like uh, the Elder Scrolls Legend stuff which was what I was going to mention was like that they're bringing a Skyrim expansion which is pretty cool I mean Skyrim's popular and then that's putting it very lightly and then they announced, I think it's coming to mobile devices, basically, to like the Android and the <laughs> Apple stores. Are you saying that's a bummer? I'm not saying it's a bummer. I was saying that then it's like, oh, it's not coming to. Uh, I, f oh, I figured they'd mm -hmm. announce it's coming to console. Like, oh, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why games like this don't come to console. Yeah, I, I get that frustration, but I've been waiting for this to come on mobile for a while now, so that's kind of a bonus for me because that's a game that I, if I'm just wanting to dick off at work for a moment, I can just play a quick game of Elder Scrolls Legends. I guess that makes sense. It's just like when when I look at it, like Gwent is like mm -hmm. you know gonna be. I think it's not out yet. I don't believe. But it's it's, it's in beta and pretty much it's open beta, so it's pretty much anyone who wants to play it can. So, but like, and that's gonna be that's available on like everywhere. And it's like, I don't know. I don't understand why uh, this was it Hearthstone. Yeah. Why why like games like that aren't on console? Like it, it's not like it's it's not like. Uh, MOBAs where it's like they're so task intensive that it's like it's hard to kind of bind that to just a controller and it's like I mean I stuff like that it just doesn't make sense to me the VR stuff was cool but it's like I don't have a VR I don't have any VR things and it, it seemed a little weird in some ways especially Doom VR like it's Doom VR is like an awesome idea but it's like right you have to do the thing where you, you point and you teleport and it's like oh that's gonna not make it 
Dude, well, I'm sure what? it's pretty hard to do the quick paced movement. Well, I meant like I, I was thinking more of like the because I know some, I know a lot, a lot of Oculus games are like this, and I, and I think some PlayStation VR games are like this. To, to my knowledge, where it's like you have the headset on, but then you still use a controller. Like that's that that's more so of like the VR experience that like I would want to play anyway. So that's what like I'm just like that would make a little bit more sense to me. But I mean, it's whatever. And then it's just like little things like that. You know, Wolfenstein was cool, but then no gameplay. Evil Within 2 was cool, but again, I haven't played the first one. I mean, there was gameplay in their trailer for Wolfenstein 2, and what they showed in that, just, you know, cutting from, you know, different parts of it, looked fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Like, completely ridiculous, which was awesome. You guys got to see a lot of dual wielding, a lot of cool weapons, a lot of very brutal kills. The game looks way better. Uh, visually than the first game, which the first game was held back by the PS3 and the 360, having to put put it out on that too, and now they can just say fuck that and move forward, which is good. But, but like the, everything was just little details, even like Skyrim remastered. Like I understand this, or Skyrim on the Switch. Like I understand the Switch is less powerful, so you're not going to get this, the Skyrim uh, special edition. special edition on that and get like mod support and stuff like that. But I, I don't know. It's just like the ami- the amiibo support and that, that stuff. I'm like, it's cool. And then they say, like, oh, they don't want to announce the release date. I'm yeah, like, that that was kind of weird. They, like, they did say it was going to be out this year. But it, no they day. said they said everything that, that they showed is coming out this year. And and it just felt like everything there was something like that. It was like, yeah, this is really cool. And then there's just this little thing where it's like, oh well, here's the reason why to maybe not get as super excited for it. I'm like, uh. so I mean, it was fine. I just I almost wish they would have almost just been like. We're gonna put our stuff on like somebody else's conference, like Sony, or Microsoft. Like, do the VR stuff and then get like the. You don't know yet, though. I mean... Well, I mean, like, <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like, well, we know it's not Microsoft, mm-hmm. and it could be at Sony, but like, like I don't know. Do put the VR stuff there and then do all that other stuff because like, Morrowind, that's cool, but it already came out. <laughs> yeah, it was the Elder Scrolls Morrowind expansion came out last week, and I don't know why they decided to take time on stage. Because people who are going to play it already are. Yeah, maybe to pad it out. I don't know. Yeah, that's like my whole issue. Like, and it, and I guess it sucks for Bethesda though, because like the 2015 was like Bethesda came out and they're like, here's Doom, here's you know we're we're making Fallout Shelter, which is really successful. I mean, and then there's Fallout 4, and it's like, hey, Dishonored 2 is happening, and they just kind of went boom, boom, boom. And even last year there was a lot of stuff where it's like, yeah. we're, we're adding a lot of stuff to Doom and. Here's Prey. And Prey and yeah. Quake is coming back and all kinds of cool stuff like that. And then this year was just kind of like, not, there was nothing like that. Yeah. I I just wish there was maybe oh, no. some, some more. E- either either another game announcement, which, you know, if they don't have it, they don't have it. Or just a longer uh, like demo of Wolfenstein 2. I think that just would have been awesome. Because the whole Bethesda Land idea was kind of goofy and playful and fun. I mean, they didn't waste time, though, you could say. But, you know, you know we had to step till midnight. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe schedule it in a way that pe- you, like, you acknowledge that you don't have much to show by having a short show, but actually, like, respect our time by not separating it from the other shows so long. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I wonder if they felt like they had to have a conference. Th- that's what I'm thinking. This year, I I, I, I and I'm wondering if they'll have one next year. I don't know. My best guess is that the reason they had one this year is because it might have been cheaper for them to pay for multiple ones in advance. Maybe. Because they added like added security from the ESA, allowing them that space. Yeah. They could get it at a cheaper price if they just bought out a couple of years in advance. Maybe. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, because, like, what, Square Enix did it, like, in 2015. Mm-hmm. And then they just kind of, like, yeah, fuck this, we're not doing it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're still... It, just the conference just seemed a little bit of a bummer, but there's a few things that I am excited for. Skyrim on the Switch could be fucking awesome, you know. I, and, and Wolfenstein too, I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah. And, and the Dishonored two stuff, I'm sure will be awesome. But yeah, yeah. the Sky, Skyrim on the Switch is like I'm I'm planning on getting a Switch here in the, sometime this summer, and so then it's actually like a I'm I'm actually having a, a debating a lot between getting it on the the Xbox One because you know complete mod support, mm-hmm. or getting it on the Switch and playing Skyrim on the go, and it's like. And about the only thing that's really making me go is like, well, I don't really necessarily care as much about Amiibo support, and 
I already have, like, an R- I mean, if, if I get a Switch, I'm already going to have an RPG that I can play on the go. It's called Legend of Zelda Breath of, Breath of the Wild, but and it's a you, new game. But <laughs> playing Breath of the Wild, I'm like, this is awesome, but I also want another game just well, I'm just gonna, as big as this one. I, I, Skyrim I, 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 is that game that's awesome. But also, like, having having replayed, uh, having, you know, played Skyrim before, most, most of the reason why I would buy it again is for the mod supports to make it a different experience because I, at least on I know they don't do it on the PS4 but I think on the Xbox they do have like the, the mod quests where you can do like people add quest lines and it's like boom here's new st- actual like stuff that I haven't done before because I did a lot I put like in one character I put 150 hours into the Skyrim and I think I have almost I think I have over 400 total I know that's nothing compared to what, to what you have <laughs> over there sir but, <laughs> but still like I did a good bit of the I think I did every major quest line in that game so I didn't I need to do that I hope the Switch version at least has the two uh, expansions maybe it'll be the legendary edition that, was that like would make sense 360 that, and that PS3 the legendary edition yeah. anyways that's Bethesda we'll be talking about Ubisoft and Sony and other stuff I have an idea <laughs> what I have an idea for the, the Skyrim on Switch. Yeah. What do you got? You go to Hyrule. Dude. <sighs> That'd be cool. Okay, you, you can almost sell me on it, kind of like in, in Breath of the Wild, if I use my Wolf Link amiibo and I get the Wolf Link as a companion to run around with me. You know what? That might sell me, just because that's like one of my favorite things that Legend of Zelda has ever done. I just love that. That's that's one of the reasons why I love Twilight Princess. So you know what? If you do that, maybe. That, that, that one amiibo support might sell me on amiibo support and be like, alright, fuck it, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah but yeah E3 it's still going still yeah. rolling Ubisoft just happened and we're here to to yeah Limp Biscuit just cannot disappear from my life right now <laughs> apparently not that's what I'm here for maybe we should just jam all of Limp Biscuit stuff after this everything you know what pisses me off about Limp Biscuit though his greatest hits has the edited version of Break Stuff and Rollin', I think. And a few other songs. The Why would you version. do the edit? On your greatest hits. I don't know. Okay. I mean, Maybe I guess most people more. would probably buy that, but... Yeah. Back, back onto the... Let's whatever. get back to the game. Ubisoft announced a Limp Bizkit game. Yeah, a Limp Bizkit game. It's called... Maybe, Maybe Limp it's, Bizkit it's, isn't just it, dance. It's... So they... So uh, on top of the Mario Rabbids crossover, they, they announced a Limp Bizkit Legend of Zelda crossover oh called Break God. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's all you want to do in Legend of Zelda is Break Stuff. Yeah. Pots and... Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm proud of that one. Thank you. Anyways, Ubisoft went and I would have to say this is probably one of the best Ubisoft conferences they put on in a long time. This was strong. I'd say probably since maybe 2014. Yeah. What did Ubisoft start having their own? I mean, they've yeah, had it since I've really forever. started... Start, I mean, definitely since, because I've only started watching E3 really since, like, 2012. And, yeah. I mean, they've had it since then, definitely. It's definitely one of their strongest ones, though. Yeah. So, they started off right away uh, at, and showed off and confirmed the Mario and Rabbids Kingdom battle game that has been leaked for fucking ever now. Uh, they showed off gameplay of it. Miyamoto was on stage. Bill Trinan as well. Made it awkward as shit. Um... August 29th, this comes out on the Switch. Uh, it's turn-based, tactical stuff. It looks legitimately cool. Yeah, it, it looks does. a lot like it could be a lot of fun. It seemed like there was a lot of varied locations from the Mario universe that my nose. And Fucking Rabbit Peach cool. looks it's, it's disturbing. disturbing. Thick. Yeah. Thick. Yeah. Thick. <laughs> the word you're... Yeah. It, it looks like it has this charm to it that's just wonderful. And, and you know, exploring seems kind of... Like, it could be neat, and then you get into battles, it seems like the more you, you know, you get into the game, the deeper it'll get and stuff. And that's Mario actually has one of my guns concerns, and, though, is will the battles and things get deeper and evolve as you progress? Yeah, I mean, what my concern with the battles is, is it going to be too easy? You know? Yeah, that's... Like, I, I hope there's a challenge to this game. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, I th- it looks fun. Mm-hmm. I- I'll probably pick it up on the Switch. Uh, what about a Switch exclusive? Yeah. Probably, um, yeah. yeah. Um, nothing. I just, I just think it's cool that they're having a tactical RPG. That's mm-hmm. something that we don't see from 
it, and it looked yeah we saw a bit of an RPG ish looking <clears throat> system it was like for like a second mm-hmm. but yeah and like you can have different party members and it looked like there was some upgrading stuff yeah, going on like, and, I mean you can get different weapons like you can get yeah. like a bullet bill rocket launcher yeah and, and like it that. had a Donkey Kong rabbit that was fucking weird. weird awesome <laughs> yeah it, this was weird and awesome at the same time and it was I think one of the probably one of the best things they could have opened with because it kind of put everybody off balance also I don't, I, I don't know if you mentioned this Amiibo support with like yeah. rabid amiibos like the rabid like Luigi and yeah. there's a rabid Yoshi that's probably the one I, I kind of want that not, not Yoshi the rabbit rabbit Yoshi. Yoshi. <laughs> like, I, ra- like rabid Yoshi is like yeah. I'm bad there. I'm just gonna get a rabid uh, rabid peach just to pose in mm. disturbing <laughs> positions do you think they have a rabid Kong or a, a rabid Kong one that's, that's what I'm gonna call him for now he's rabid RK Kong. Yeah. RK instead of DK I mean this, this could be a really good game out of nowhere so yeah then he moved into Assassin's Creed Origins they showed off a trailer that had uh, the creative uh, producer on there up there talking about the game, and uh, then they sh- cut to some gameplay from a monitor, and it was dark, and they're like, "Come back later and see it." That was kind of lame. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we saw a lot of it at Microsoft's conference and stuff, but still, man, maybe <laughs> just cool. say, "Hey, go check out gameplay later." Don't show us this. Yeah, like yeah. cutting to it and kind of teasing us and I think there. I honestly think that was a that was a mistake in their live production I think they meant to put it up on the screen full screen but Maybe. they just didn't yeah they didn't Maybe have the premium meatball to put things up on the screen yeah. yeah but I mean we talked about Assassin's Creed Origins at length yesterday it looks good and I'm excited for it so I, 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 they definitely in the trailer showed off more of like the locales yeah. and I guess more of the environment which I think is is, is cool because that's the one thing that, like, you know, this we, it needs is, like, yeah. Egypt is a very diverse, ancient Egypt is a very it's diverse It's not just sand island. and pyramids. There's forests and the Nile and... Sahara fruit, and, so. well, Serengeti and things yeah. like that. I just hope it doesn't... It provides more environmental variety than, like, because I got a very Assassin's Creed 3 feel from, like, the open... Like, how are they going to deal with, like, the openness? Are they going to make a truly open world where you can go right from... I'm just going to name a random Egyptian city Thebes because it makes sense that they would be in Thebes at some point out right out into the wild somewhere or is it yeah. are they completely separate areas like three like months? is it yeah or is like the desert your frontier yeah or something I would imagine it's all open I would I would hope at this point so I imagine that was kind of a, like a technological limitation that they had with three why they had to break it up like that yeah. but it looks good so then they uh, talked about the crew too uh, with some trailer and it had some demo looking stuff you can there, it seems like there's more like traditional racing in the game but you can also race boats planes off road dirt bikes street race early 2018 for that one uh, it looks way cooler than the first game did in my opinion yeah maybe Definitely. Ubi is learning yeah I don't know what do you think I mean if they're going to go for a racing game, they have to have more than just what they did with the crew. I mean, mm-hmm. if and they have to distinguish themselves from the need for speeds of the world. Mm-hmm. And I, I think they're trying to do that. Yeah. I got a very Forza, like, Horizon-ish vibe from just the the trailer and stuff they showed mm-hmm. off. Yeah, I, I hope it has a Forza feel to it. Because if it can have that and then other things, I, I mean, it could be down. It could be neat. I could fuck some. Yeah. Then we had two South fuck. Park announcements in here. Well, only one's really an announcement. We got a trailer for South Park, The Fractured But Whole, which they gave a new date for of October 17th of this year. And they announced South Park Phone Destroyer, which is a mobile game coming out this year, which seemed very pretty good. Like you play Cowboys and Indians versus Knights versus, versus, pirates, versus, versus, versus Pirates versus, versus, versus Clerics versus, versus Cops versus yeah. Cops versus, versus Man Cock, Cock Magic. Yeah. Versus aliens, so, yeah, seems fun. Um, that could be an actual like cool thing. Like maybe it could be a fun mobile game. To, yeah, like, mm-hmm. buying like, it. Could, this could actually be a mobile game that's worth actually like hey, I, spending time with on the phone. Mm, there are those out there, but we're not going to go into that right now. Yeah, I'll yeah. educate you later. <laughs> <laughs> we got a trailer for a game called Transference, 
which is supposed to come out spring 2018, had Elijah Wood in the trailer. Seemed like it could be a, it was a VR game, maybe. It would I look, think it's, it, it, it looks like some, I wonder. It, it would be cool if they did some kind of. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, like uh, cross experience. Well, like part of the game's in VR, and part of the game isn't. Almost like this is a really, really weird reference. But did anybody see Spy Kids three when that came yeah. out? And like there's parts of the movie where you put 3D glasses on, but and then you took them off in some spots. So it's like. Something like that. You you wear VR when you're doing some stuff, and then you take it off. It's almost like, yeah. I think this is made more for like the the Samsung Gear VR than like one of the hardcore like the the PSVR, or the Oculus, or you know, maybe. What have you. I mean, they, all they showed off was a trailer. We literally it that's looked all we like they were using it. the Gear headsets, though. Yeah, I don't know. It like it was it was it's interesting. It was weird. I so, agree yeah. with that. It's, it's an interesting. Yeah, but it shows you know Ubisoft's been a pretty big supporter of VR, which VR know, really Star needs. Trek. Uh, yeah, apparently, the, the, apparently flight, Star Trek, so. the Star Trek Bridge Commander Bridge or Bridge. whatever, is actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, then they announced a somewhat, I guess you could say, new IP, Skull and Bones, which basically takes the ship combat from Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag, and it's its own game now. And they had a pretty big blowout of this game, Fall two thousand eighteen. Um, this game looks cool. It does, and and I and I think it did a decent job differentiating itself from Sea of Thieves. I mean, what, just the art style, but mm-hmm. like, it's definitely very much focused on the ship combat. The other thing was like, I hope that maybe it's like, I mean, of course, if it's not coming out until over a year later, it's probably not done yet. So hopefully, maybe at some point there's some kind of boarding mechanism besides just like so. a like here here's a cutscene cut like. Because that could be cool, and it's just like, I mean, in all honesty, if it's just Assassin's Creed 4 without the Assassin's Creed stuff, I'd buy it. Yeah, it <laughs> seemed like you can uh, hook up with friends and, you know, uh, conduct raids up. or, yeah. yeah. And and it's fight in like, other it, players. I was just saying, it's stuff. in like a, like an open, not an open world, but it's like, if you go into like this area, I don't, the way they talked, it sounded like the Indian Ocean might be the only area that's PvP. But like, if you're going after like a merchant transport, then other people can go after it at the same time. I don't know, because it sounded like this was only in the Indian Ocean. That's what I'm saying. I, I I hope that's not the. In some ways, I hope that's not the case. In other ways, I do. Like if like PVP oh, area is restricted to one spot, otherwise you'd have to worry about that all the fucking time. Yeah, I wonder if, or maybe they'll do like the GTA Five thing where here's the open world, and then if you want to go into a PVP event. Well, they're kind of scattered around the area. I was wondering if the, they would maybe do like a division thing where they have like a dark zone like area in like this one area. If you go in there, there's going to be a lot of their sh- ships in there, but there's good loot and all kinds maybe, of stuff. Yeah, you can maybe, sail maybe in there with, with your the friends, fuck a ton of shit up. That could be really cool if they do that. It also just be cool to really dive into like the pirate stuff and to be like, I want to have because it looks like there's ship customization that looks mm-hmm. a lot deeper than Black Flag ever was. So it's like. Have you know? I want to be. I want to. I want to be an Indian pirate. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a different, or, different way of doing things and things like that. Like different ship classes. Like, hey, I'm on a dreadnought, so I might move slow, but I've got a lot of armor and a lot of guns. Or and like you're in like a sloop, which is quick, and it seems like they're like the the scouts or the the snipers of the the ships. And I feel like that maybe might be like a level customization thing. This again, last thing I'll say. Also, there could be the cool thing of like you have a ship. Until you don't anymore, and then you have to get a new ship. That could honest, uh, honestly, in, in that kind of scenario, that might actually be kind of cool. Mm. To like, fuck, okay, I need to need to build up my ship. Maybe then... make it something like the the hardcore mode that Diablo had, where here's like normal mode where you you know if you lose your ship, okay, you got to pay like a small fee to you know get it fixed. But in the hardcore mode, you lose your ship, you got to spend your money to buy a new ship and then work your way back up. In a PvP environment, that might be a little harder to do, but I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Just, like, how, how do you differentiate between that? Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, this is the first we've... I mean, this game's been rumored for a while. Like, people have been asking for this kind of game for a while, and since we just heard about it, I mean, we'll definitely hear a lot more yeah. over time. So This kind of takes care of all the complaints of Assassin's Creed 4's multiplayer not having ship combat or anything like that. So. Yeah. It's going to be neat. Let me buy Ubisoft Singapore? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got a presentation of Just Dance 2018, which yeah, it's kind of dumb. people up on stage dancing and singing, singing and, and stuff. Like that. And we got a game called Starlink Battle for Atlas 
fall 2018 on uh, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch, which is pretty cool. Uh, Toys to Life. Yeah, sort of, I guess. Mm -hmm. They say there's a physical and a digital aspect to it. You have some ships, you're flying around, fucking some shit up. Could be cool. Um, then we got a steep road to the Olympics expansion, December 5th. I thought the Olympics were this year. Yeah. yeah. You dummy. Good job. <laughs> I felt like a complete dumbass right, right in that moment. <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but Steve came Sorry. out a year ago. December or of last year. Like six months ago. Mm -hmm. I felt like no one talked about it. And now they're kind of doing it again in December. I don't know. Steve just like that might like, like putting out game. games in December. Yeah. Like the only one that worked out was Rainbow Six. But that's just because it was Rainbow Six. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, then we got uh, Far Cry 5, uh, our first gameplay demo of that game. So you can get doggies to come help you out and grab get weapons guns, you. get some you can hire some people fly around in airplanes or snipers mm -hmm. and stuff co-op you can have somebody yeah. drive a truck and just run into people yeah it, you can run over people and farm equipment yeah it seemed ridiculous mm -hmm. which is kind of where Far Cry needs to go at this point yeah like it seems like it. that game's going to be kind of weird because it has this like Seems like it has a super serious narrative and world that it's setting up, but then the gameplay is just going to be completely ridiculous. The story <laughs> itself sounds super dark, but the gameplay yeah. just brings mindless violence to that darkness, kind of in like almost a very just cause kind of way, to make it seem just a little less heavy. Yeah. Then the last thing that they ended with, which felt like they really weren't ending with it. Yeah. It just kind of went straight to it, but they ended with Beyond Good and Evil 2. It is finally a thing. We got a trailer for it. A very good trailer. Yeah, I thought good. that trailer was awesome. Sure. This yeah. is apparently going to be a prequel. They mentioned something about a, a shared world thing, um, and that they've been working on the technology for this game for a very, very long time. You can join the Space Monkey program to help them make the game stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, Space Monkey. I never played Beyond Good and Evil. It's it's one of those older games that I kind of missed. I want to go back and play. Uh, so this didn't hit me as much, uh, but I'm still interested in what this game could be. You know, definitely. It's yeah. the, the concept's very different from what I feel like from like other games. Or it's it's familiar, but it's got its own little flair to it. Yeah. The Beyond yeah. Good and Evil universe. So yeah. Did you play Beyond Good and Evil, Frank? No, I haven't. I I will go back and play it. Before I get into this, though, so. yeah, I wonder. I know they ported the game HD to the 360. I wonder if that version's backwards compatible. I don't know. I, Xbox I One. Think I don't know. They probably it probably is. At this that point. might be a good way to play it. If but, it is, um, is it on PC? Because I probably it, just I'd probably just pick it up PC. there. Yeah, um, it might be on Steam. Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah, like we're all kind of of the age where we kind of missed the first Beyond Good and Evil because I feel like like us as gamers really weren't into that sort of thing at the time. I mean, it was but on... But we know of Beyond Good Evil. We know its stuff. place in, like, gaming lore and history and things like yeah. that. We know it was a big, influential game. And this is a sequel that people... People I mean, have been asking for sequel for almost thing, but 15 years. It's been yeah. a long time. People have really wanted to... So they didn't say it was going to be at E3, and then they announced it. I think, I think they even explicitly said, it's not going to be at E3, and then they just yeah. turned around and be like, yeah, we lied. Which that, is cool. that was the probably the the get hype sponsored by Gatorade moment of all yeah. the conferences so far. Ubisoft was weird. They weren't two hours this year. No, and they were kind of straight to the point and had a lot of good stuff. What was? If you no, guys had to pick Tyler. one thing from the conference, what? I mean, probably Skull and Bones. Just because I mean, Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag is still probably one of my favorite games of this generation. So okay. I think that might be that might take the cake for me. Skull and Bones for me as well. That game looks could be very cool. I mean, Assassin's, I'm more excited for Assassin's Creed Origins, but we saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of the out of the things that actually were revealed today that haven't leaked or anything like that, yeah, I'm going to agree. Skull and Bones looks very intriguing to me, very interesting, something I could fuck with. I mean, wow. Although it leaked, like, we didn't know what kind of game uh, Mario Rabbids was going to be, mm -hmm. and I... I actually, I'm really excited knowing now that it's a tactical RPG that 
that, that's something I'm really interested in and something that I very much look forward to playing as soon as it comes out. Yeah. Combo Breaker. And we, I mean, all of us that have Switches are kind of in that, like, I don't want to say starvation, but now we're kind of, like, hu- hungry and we're craving more mm-hmm. Switch-exclusive games. Yeah. R.I.P. Pokemon. <laughs> A3. Hey. Sony just happened. It's a thing. It We're happened. here to talk about it. In stuffs. Yeah. Pretty much the last big conference of E3. Besides Ways. Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo's not really... I mean, they're kind of... They like really a aren't live stream. A They'll do their own they thing. They have like a 30-minute video they're going to release. It's not even a live event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll see what Last they have. live event of E3. So last year, Sony put on a banger of a show that was just... Game after game after game, trailer after trailer, nobody really talked at all. This year, same kind of exact same thing. Same story. Sean Layden was only up there twice, right? Yeah, yeah. Two, twice. It, two or three it, times. After, after the first three games and demos slash demos, and then uh, Sean yeah, Layden, the and then yeah. like an hour straight of nothing but games. Yeah. And then Sean little, Layden, and little, then one little, last thing. Little interference by Nigel Fuckwad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel <laughs> Fuckwad. <laughs> Sony had some shit to, to show, and uh, we are here to have a chat about it. Um, they started off the show, they showed a new trailer for Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which is looking very good, mm-hmm. very Uncharted, very excited for that. Yeah. I don't know how Go much there is to say about it. It's Uncharted, and it's looking very good, mm-hmm. and it's, it's out This is supposed to be, ten, that's a ten, it's supposed to be like a 10 hour game, isn't it? That's what they said. Cool. They said that's they couldn't constrain themselves. So I don't blame them. Yeah. No. And okay, if Naughty Dog right. wants to keep making fantastic content, keep please feel free. Yeah. Then we got a trailer for the new expansion for Horizon Zero Dawn called The Frozen Wilds, which is out this year. Looks sweet. Winter. It's awesome. It's winter time. Yes. Winter time. I'm excited for that. I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn this morning, and that is still a fantastic fucking game. Still one of my favorite experiences of the year. I'm hoping for another uh, it- fantastic story with that one. I'm very curious what the story hooks are yeah. in that one, considering where it left off. Yeah, at the end, I agree. Well, she does mention being a child of something. I don't want to say because of spoilers. Yeah. I wonder if this will be a more contained story between the tribes of the world, or if it'll connect to that big overall. From the more sound sci-fi of it, it's a little more. Thing. From the sounds of what they were talking about in the trailer, it sounds like it's a little more. Constrained. It seems to focus because I wor- heard the word hunt a lot, mm-hmm. so it seems a lot more focused on like the hunting stuff. Maybe it focuses a lot on like the hunter's lodge or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, then we got a nice chunk of ga- more gameplay from Days Gone. This one was a lot more stealth Varied. focused, a little bit more character focused, and uh, it sh- kind of showed. The variety of ways that you can go through doing different things. It still seemed pretty pretty alright to me. It seemed uh, very organic in the way the gameplay flowed. Yeah. Like they had some uh you know, he, he the guy you're playing, uh which is there a name to that guy? I think he hasn't I thought I heard there the prob- name, but they didn't really There probably is, but anyways. He he took a bear trap, set it in set it in the bushes. Then took like a rock or something, threw, threw it over at the sign. bushes. Yeah. Some guy got caught in the bear trap. Everybody was running over. He snuck by him, and then I guess they tried to, the other characters tried to shoot it off, which then alerted the whole zombie horde that came rushing towards them. And then he kept running. Then he set up some, some charges on a dam, which ended up blowing up, and the horde was running through that. Took out all the other guys, and he got to his objective. It's pretty fucking cool. I'm sure there's a lot of ways you can go around. Zombie oh. bear, covering a barbar. Bar. Dude, yeah. the zombie yeah, yeah. wildlife, man. That's that's something. That's Zombified be... wildlife, that, that, which is something that you really didn't see in The Last of Us. It's, it's something you don't see. I mean, in zombie games in general. Resident Evil, a bit. Resident Evil, like uh, yeah, but those like, aren't really zombies, man. Yeah, those are those are something else. It's more of a you, you know what the fuck I'm that saying. requires people actually following whatever. I think the the Resident Evil. I'm not sure which story is more fucked up, the Resident Evil story or the Kingdom Hearts story. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Ten, ten <laughs> right now. Million percent. There's no, there's no, there's no, no question. I don't know. The Resident Evil storyline seems rather fucking complicated. Yeah, uh, but yeah, this game's looking good. No date. 
that's kind of a theme for a lot of things for the conference, but or still okay. or or no concrete date. Yeah, there was a lot of like. I'm okay with that though, because then you don't get the disappointment. Out. Yeah, they don't get this the disappointment of the oh we got to push this date back. But that just kind of like things like that anymore scare me because there's been a lot of games who that have just sat at E3 forever. All and whereas mean, Sony's not just because Microsoft a, can't get games out. And Square me, Enix. If you let me finish. <laughs> you know, just because, you know, I, I, I mean, that's just a lot of games have gone through, like, cycles of being at so many E3s. I mean, hell, The Division was at three of them. Maybe, technically four of them. It was at their last year. It was at 2013, 14, 15, and last year. It's at every single E3. And, like, you know, a, a lot of games got announced in 2013 that just didn't happen for a long time. And so the, fa- the fact that there's no... got canceled. Uh, the fact, yeah, the fact that there's no date, kind of like I don't know, it's like, did you announce this a little but early? But from what which... they showed, it seems like this game is getting close to completion. Yeah, it looks like it's coming together pretty well. I mean, also, I but there's all there's also the thing of like, you know, they could have made the demo. I mean, the demo is probably a representation of what they hope the final product is, but they probably made this thing for this. Yeah. You know, I, I again, I'm very cynical when it comes to E3 anymore. I I try not to trust it too much. E3 doesn't have the power it used to. Yeah, things like Watch Dogs has kind of tempered my expectations a lot. Yeah. Then we got two announcements, uh, in, in in three showings of, uh, you know, games from Japanese developers. Uh, two of them being Capcom. One was Monster Hunter World, which is coming early 2018 to PlayStation Four. Monster Hunter has been kind of stuck on Nintendo systems for a long time. There is one, Monster Hunter Double Cross, I believe, that's coming to the Switch in Japan, which will probably come to the Switch over here eventually, uh, which is like a souped-up version of Generations, I think. Yeah. Um, so this, I guess, is a whole new thing, and it looked beautiful yeah. to on use, the PlayStation 4. This could be right at home on that stuff. To use Keith's words, I could fuck. I could fuck. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I mean, you guys are... Monster Hunter fans. I didn't really play much of 4 because I wanted to play it with people and like I mean besides Frank you guys never really like got it so I just couldn't get I don't that's not a game to me to play on a 3DS. That that is I could play something like that on a Switch or I can a understand 4 that, but not a 3DS. It, it the yeah. controls to feel a little janky on 3DS. Yeah. And also like I, I mean it looked good on a 3DS but like I, I want something that looks fucking nice and this could be a monster hunter i can actually like dive into because yeah people would get it yeah looked good then we got a trailer for shadow of the colossus which i guess is a remaster coming to ps4 next year looks so fucking good which <laughs> sam right. who couldn't be here looks so fucking good sam just shot that out of the blue and got that right <laughs> i think sam probably creamed his pants it's like, ah, oh, like that's really cool. I mean, I've I've kind of wanted a, something like that for for a while. I mean, I I just because I, Shadow of the Colossus is a classic. It's a great it's, fucking it's, game. It's it's a it's a class. It's a PS2 classic. So I've dived into Shadow of the Colossus twice on once on PS2, once on PS3. Only did the first Colossi and then stop. Dude, and this is why the controls are fucking terrible. No, they are fucking bad. They're but, fucking awful. But if you can get past the controls, I know. It is a but that's a hard thing to say. So here's here's what I recommend for you then. If you're gonna get it on this, hopefully they have a way to change up the controls, or they change up the controls and make them less of a fucking hot mess. If they didn't, watch people play through it because it is a fantastic fucking story. Yeah. Uh, I can I can tell you what my vote. For best remaster in 2018 is going to be. Yeah, I guarantee it's going to be right Shadow now. Colossus. Shadow of Colossus is one of my, again is a is a personal favorite game of mine, and so well. <laughs> did, did, I wonder if they're going to make you hunt the lizards again. I, I hope so. Will. I hope so. But what if what if Final Fantasy VII remake comes out next year? Final Fantasy VII remake isn't coming out until 2020 at the earliest. You're funny. You're a funny person. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. because Square that would require Square I mean, putting out a game. It's not uh, Dragon Quest or uh, I don't know what else they do. Mm-hmm. I guess they don't put out Hitman anymore. <laughs> they don't put out yeah because they sold IO, which I hope someone buys IO. I really do. Wow. Then we got a nice uh, story mode trailer, I guess, for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Uh, and there's a demo out today. 
Dante from Devil May Cry is going to be in the game. Mega uh, Man. September 19th. Uh, Rocket Raccoon. Yep. Rocket Raccoon and Groot are one character. They're the same character. Is it, it it's Groot just, or Baby Groot, though? It's Groot. It's not It's not connected to the MCU. Okay. It, it's it's the Marvel Universe, but like it's not the MCU. Yeah. This game looks cool. It does. Looks like it could be, could be neat. But um, most Marvel vs. Capcom games are generally very good. The little the little crossover thing they hit out was like Dante tossing Ebony and Ivory over a rocket. Which is a cool idea. Yeah. I, I mean, there's probably nothing like that in the game, but still, it's just a cool thing. Then we uh, got a nice, solid trailer for Call of Duty World War II, which I guess mm, some of the campaign... I'm ready to go back to the 1940s. This game's looking very good. I'm, ex- I'm very, very excited for it. I'll save this for the end. It's, it, it, it's an opinion I have for this conference in general. Or, or, or how Sony does does is doing their stuff now. It's a little gripe. Little yeah. gripe. But. Between uh, Far Cry 5, Wolfenstein, Call of Duty World War 2, we're going to be able to kill a lot of Nazis and neo-Nazis. Yeah. I'm okay with sure. that. I just thought, oh wow. <laughs> There's a lot it's, of Nazi killing that's going to go on this the, year. It's the year Over of... Over the next two years. It's the year of the Nazi hunter. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> what, if they, what if they brought back Spy Hunter but made it like World War 2? I mean, that'd be, Mount I, I guns on. I was like never it. big into Spy Hunter. I couldn't. I couldn't. But then we got some announcement of some PlayStation VR games, which is pretty cool. A lot of solid looking VR. The Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim's coming to VR. That's fucking huge. <sighs> yeah, which is wow. I think Frank might have blew his load. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> so, check your so, so here's the thing. Yeah. How many systems <laughs> are you going to buy Skyrim right now? So okay, <laughs> first off, table. first off, how many systems do you currently own it on? Uh, I'll just say at least PC, Xbox 360, you PS3, did. PS4. That's four, right? Okay. Yeah, I found it on four systems. Okay, so I actually bought it twice on Xbox 360 because once, once when I left home, I left Skyrim <laughs> and then I bought it again. Okay, because now, you now, just now, had to scratch now, the now, edge. Now here's my other question. Uh, I mean, it's probably not another. So I bought Skyrim uh, five times. It's, it's probably not another purchase, but I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, 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 you're gonna get it for the PlayStation VR. Are you gonna buy it for the Switch? <sighs> Don't ask me that question. Hold on, hold yes. on. He'll buy it hold secretly. On. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> no. because there's no... If there was mod support for the Switch, which there's not from what I've... I haven't seen anything about mod support for the Switch. I don't think the Switch could handle that shit. Man. I don't think the Switch could handle it, but... Because now that they've added mod support to consoles and you're already PC Master Race anyway, mm. would you get it on the Switch? I don't... I... See, I think I might just get it on the Switch anyway because air, airplane, I, you know, flights and stuff. That's exactly, I'm like, ah, oh, that, that's like the thing because like, it's slightly off topic, but like, Skyrim, I want mods, but then at the same time, Skyrim on the go. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And that's right. a big draw. That's the thing. I, I, I love okay. the Switch. Fuck it, I'll get it for both. <laughs> I, 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 most of my time that I've played Breath of the Wild has been... Hand the sports hall in the background and hand up, but I've literally played it on TV twice. Mm-hmm. And About three. I times. played my Switch on TV like four times. You know the game. That system is a handheld system. Me and Skyrim on that. That it's just it might awesome. be too but much. Still, to this handle. is huge. This yeah. is like, a huge thing for PlayStation VR. Either I'm so, I get, in some ways I understand, but I'm almost surprised they didn't. Pass- why didn't Bethesda? Why, yeah, why didn't last Bethesda night? have to this? To pad out their because this comment. would have been. I mean, great. it's a, I get. I it's get a why they thing for Sony. I get. I get why they didn't. But then it's like, if they were able to be like, yeah, Sony, you, you, you got this. But we're gonna have it at our conference. But, but no, first. no, no, you got this. But then it's like, can you yeah. just done that with all of your big things, and just kind of like again, press release everything. Else. Press release. Uh, you know, future stuff coming to Elder Scrolls Online, the Elder Scrolls Legends, you know, uh, whatever the other fuck. Didn't they announce a, an IP? So, didn't they announce? No, I'm, maybe I'm confused. No. I'm getting my I'm getting my E3s mixed yeah, up. Yeah, they had no. I'm like, getting my E3s there mixed up. Zero sorry. new IP this year. But like, just the other, you know, all Pretty the other same. shit that they announced, just kind of. Yeah. The last thing I'm gonna say about the Elder Scrolls Skyrim being VR is. I mean, we knew Skyrim's a massive game. It's a very important game in the history of video games. It's but the this number one RPG still... of all time, supposedly, according to uh, but, GI. But I know it's old, but it shows how much legs and power that it still has. That people want this in VR and will probably sell very well in VR. It'll probably sell well on the Switch. Well, and this game's already sold extraordinarily well. By that logic, why haven't we gotten GTA Five VR? That'd be cool. 
Because I'm not saying no. Rockstar makes two. They develop for two games. GTA Online. Yeah, but they own PlayStation two. One. Yeah. Anyways, maybe yeah. maybe, maybe they're, they don't fucking feel like it because GTA Five is kind of. I mean, RDR Two is coming out. How, how many GTA Five just online expansions that we had at this point? A lot. A lot. They, they put they put out one like every as you look at your non-existent fucking watch, which which has nothing to do with how it would with tell how many number of expansions. <laughs> this watch said about 12, 12. DLCs, I see which a is probably past the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean they just seriously put one out like every two months. Yeah, yeah. and they're and honestly, and even, it's even still even in the, the in the. In the, usually in the top even though I don't play it anymore and I kind of don't have any drive to play GTA Online a lot of these fucking expansions look cool they do like they get and it's still in the NPD for a very good reason you, you, you can get the kit with like a rocket car or and, and get a jump and a parachute and shoot machine guns out of the front I'm like yeah why hasn't there been mod support for GTA that's a good question well, I think there is on PC on PC Anyways, yeah. but console anyway okay, different back on to, yeah, PlayStation back on VR track. There's four other games they announced. Yeah. Star Child, uh, The so Inpatient, far. Bravo Team. Both of those games are from Supermassive Games, which developed Until Dawn. And then we got uh, a Moss. game called Moss, which was a little bunny rabbit. It Moss a looked really hell. cool. And a giant it was snake. a rat. It was a little rat. It looked like a bunny no, rabbit. No, it was a mouse. It was a mouse. Mouse, whatever. Mouse, mouse rabbit. Mouse it made rat. me think of Red Wall. <laughs> it was Either a mouse way. with a giant... Giant snakes. E3, giant snake here. Either way, we looked, did see Ormagander, but that's that's what I mean. Giant snakes. Giant snakes is the theme of this year's E3. It says a lot, in ways, about Sony with PlayStation VR that they had it at E3. Regardless of how big these games are, you know, it, it they, shows that they let the Vita fucking die. They, they they barely had the Vita at E3, even Ever. when it was out, and to have. VR here still says like yeah we believe in it we got Skyrim coming to it there's other and smaller, we believe that this is the next cool step indie, for gaming indie indie experiences that we can get behind that's cool yeah you know uh, they Good. also talked about a uh, a new Final Fantasy 15 experience called Monster of the Deep which uh, to me it looks, looks awful, like fishing it's fishing sure. fishing simulator having the Final Fantasy 15 in VR. That's still a big thing. Isn't there... Yeah. Did, didn't, didn't they... they did, have they already put out the other thing? Because I know last year they were showing off some Final Fantasy 15 VR thing. Mm, did yeah, that that's, that's I a don't know. thing. But... Not a I very good thing? Nobody it's, really played it. Sort okay. of gets to the theme of the, their conference, which we'll get to at the end. But, uh, yeah. Then they transitioned into God of War. A nice gameplay chunk of that, which showed a little bit more story stuff, a lot more combat, a lot more exploration stuff. Early 2018 for this game. And almost everyone in this room blew their load. The game looks fantastic. It does. I'm very excited for that one. There um, might have been one person in the room that didn't blow their load. Wow. Well, yeah. Then we got uh, a story trailer, g- gameplay demo again for Detroit Become Human. Uh, this game's looking fantastic as well. No but date on this it one. It seemed very different from what I was originally expecting. you got to imagine this game's It's been different, different for the... All three th- times it's yeah. been shown, it's been different. Yeah. So that that kind of worries me a little bit. Like they might be trying to be too like. Cool I thought they well. pull yeah. they pull out every time. And it's like there's so many ways you can go about everything. Well, I think it's kinda, I think I'm I think sure what it is. I think about. it's like because what the first one of the first times it was just like the choice stuff. So I think yeah. it's just like it's one of those things where it's like especially when you know Telltale is popular choice choices in game the, the, that kind of game is kind of popular it's in it's the cool thing to do was, right now so they kind of hit that and then they're also like don't worry there's more to it than that wasn't last year like weren't you kind of like a like a detective or a cop or something mm-hmm. you were you were a negotiator yeah like a hostage negotiator or something like that and then now it seems like you're a very different character than that so who knows maybe this is one of those games that shifts between a couple different perspectives which could be interesting also we don't know like some of these perspectives could be just things for uh, showing the world. Like, yeah. Who knows? Maybe you're, you'd never play as Marco. any of these characters again, or Marcus, whatever the guy's name is, the android. Marcus. You never play as Marcus. Like you're just kind of. It's just saying, here, here's how the game functions, and here is a character in the game. You know what I mean? That could be very. Or they could do like the GTA Five thing, where there's like a couple different main characters. But instead of, like, coming together, they each have, like, a separate, I don't want to say independent, but intertwined storyline. 
be neat. Maybe. I don't know. I do think you'll probably play multiple characters in this game. It's gonna be cool. I'm big into I'm this because, like I said, yeah. I'm uh, as I've as I've said a couple times, I'm tired of Telltale shit. Um, but I also and love what gritty the, sci-fi, and this is what yeah, this is what the this is the kind of game that I want yeah. like that. This yeah. has like a very Blade Runner feel, very yeah, yeah, gritty, very 80s sci-fi like dystopian sort of vibe. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, then we got trailer from Destiny Two, which showed a little bit more of the story. Uh, and they confirmed that there's going to be an exclusive strike called the Lake of Shadows, uh, exclusive gear, ship, exotic weapon, and a uh, multiplayer map, all coming to the PlayStation 4 version of the game. Unsurprising, this is exactly what happened with the first game. Uh Nobody, I mean, it is a shitty thing. I won't lie. Because, because think about Destiny 1. Hawkmoon was exclusive to the PlayStation version for a year. Hawkmoon was broken for the longest fucking time on the PlayStation version. Then they fixed it. Then the Xbox version got that. They never got to experience how broken Hawkmoon was. You know, that's, I'd say Hawkmoon was even stuff kind of fairly sucked. broken after but, they but it. A but it was a lot more broken. Yeah. I mean, this stuff... I mean, I can't judge this stuff until you actually play it, but like, the Dust Palace strike that was exclusive to Destiny 1 was not great. It still Man. really isn't great. I hate playing it. The, the only, the only, the only so exclusive thing that was like, wow, this is actually really good was the uh, the Undying Mind. The Undying Mind was cool, yeah. The Undying and, Mind was a good one. And the multiplayer maps were cool as well. The multiplayer yeah. maps, were but uh, but yeah, everything. So else who knows how good like, the strike will be? I was like, yeah. So, but story though, I mean, it's looking like Destiny Two might have an actually good story, and we got to see Cabal without their helmets on. Mm. Yeah, they're, we get, yeah, they're ugly motherfuckers. Yeah, they are. Yeah, we, I, I'm, as I imagine them to be. We got we got we got to meet Gary. Get to see what, what his ugly mug looks like. <laughs> Gary or Gom or something with something, something with a G. Yep. Yeah. No date for the beta. I was surprised. I was I was, surprised I, was, I, was I was surprised also with War, Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah. With that happening, I was surprised they, they both those games were like beta now. Or either. I was expecting at least one of those games to be beta now. Yeah. Then Sony ended with a very extended look at Spider-Man, which is coming next year. This game looks very good. It had a lot of very Spider-Man vibes, very uh, fast, fluid combat a lot of Spider-Man moments of saving people yeah. rather than killing them. Even the bad guys, you know, he ropes them up out of the helicopter also, and throws them back into the building instead of letting them fall. And this looked so good. This makes me very happy. Just in terms of, like, movement and combat, it also had a very Batman Arkham vibe. Yeah. As it, well. It, it had, like, the, I mean, that style of game that's very popular now. Yeah. I I really liked it. I mean, uh, two Spider-Man games that I, that I remember was I remember playing, playing uh, Spider-Man on the N64. It was also on the computer where I played it in the PlayStation 1. Yeah. Uh, and Enter Electro. Can't forget yeah, I Spider-Man that. 2, Enter Electro. And then, and then I remember Spider-Man 2... The game, based oh, on the, the movie, movie, which is, yeah. I think, you know, one of the one of the best superhero games ever made. One of the best Spider-Man games, and uh, and this gave me vibes of like that. Like I hope, like they showed swinging around. I hope that's I love a major part. Like I hope game. it's I hope it's open world. I mean, this is one game where it's like just because the movement and moving around is actually cool. Like sure, I just looks just, so just fluid. let me swing everywhere. It looks so fluid. I hope it feels that fluid. I agree. I, I'm really excited for Spider-Man, but Spider-Man. What, one of the things that I, I like most about it is just how they... It's not super serious. It's like they, they got some humor going on. With they got the like traditional it's, Spider-Man it, vibes it, It's going. Spider-Man. Yeah, it's it's, like, they're, they're nailing it. They aren't like... Although you might want to compare it to an Arkham, it's not, not ever going to get that dark. Yeah. No, just, but in terms of like movement and combat, it mm-hmm. felt very Arkham-ish. A lot of slow-mo, and, which yeah, works because of the spider senses and things mm-hmm. like that. And I think this game's going to benefit a lot from being separate from the Marvel Universe, not being tied down to what they've said that Mm -hmm. Insomniac can make their own Spider-Man story, and that's going to be fun to see what they come up with, because Insomniac makes good games. Insomniac does make great games. Yeah, and I like the, you know, that typical Spider-Man banter that you hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, the voice acting was fantastic. Sounded great. Also... The swinging and mobility looked really good through the city. That's what I mean, like... 
God, like, like, like I know, like I know, our our song nowadays has been like, we're, we're done, I'm done with open worlds. Give me, give me a world that like has stuff to do. I honestly wouldn't mind in this one. Just let me swing around a lot. Yeah, let and it's yeah. Fun. and Insomniac's good at that. Look at Sunset Overdrive. They're good at movement through fucking. But also, the, like the Spider-Man games have typically, while it's been like open world in New York and it's been contained to New York, it also felt populated. In There's those stuff open world games. Like I remember playing Spider- the Spider-Man 2 game, and I remember not doing the, for a long time, not just doing the story missions, because there's all kinds of, like, Side crimes happening. You gotta go get that place. balloon for that kid, yeah? Yeah, yeah man, and, and then there's like, oh, there's that bank robbery that's happening, and you just take out the guys, and they, they fight, set up the exact same way. I mean, I was like 10, so that's what, like, what the mm-hmm. fuck I'm doing, so. Yeah. Fun Sounds times, good. man. It, yeah. it looked very good. I hope it feels as good as it looked. I agree. Um... I want to throw out a few things overall, just big thoughts about Sony's conference really quick before you guys say your final words or whatever. One, they doubled down on exclusives, which is good. Mm-hmm. Two, none of them are coming out this year except for uh, yeah, Uncharted, you know, standalone, smaller and adventure, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Maybe some of these PlayStation VR games, but they're not that big. And I'm, I'm removing the third party games out of that equation as well. But they still have a lot of exclusives. Uh, three, we sat here last year and was, our mind was blown of how great their conference was. They ex- announced all these fucking exclusive games. They showed us all those exclusive games, almost all of them, uh-huh. this year, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, none of them are coming out this year. <laughs> but we didn't which expect it, any of them to come it, out it this year. It could be another holiday that Sony has without big exclusive stuff. I mean, you can get behind... Horizon and Uncharted, and that's fine. But, you know, they don't need it, but still, I mean... The exclusives are going to come, who knows? and I'm kind of okay that they're kind of, like, looking long-term with exclusives, because Microsoft really didn't have any exclusives this year. They yeah. didn't have any exclusives I mean, last year, really. Who knows what exclusive stuff they're going to have to come. Sony's like, we've got exclusives. We're, we're not going to blow our load all at once. We're going to spread them out. We're going to make sure they're good. You know, we're going to make sure they're worth the time and investment you're going to make to, to play them. I'm fully okay with the conference because it was nothing but game after game after game after yeah. game after solid, just maybe not announcement, but solid, like, deeper look. Yeah. Microsoft might be launching a new console this year, uh, but they don't have a lot of exclusives to back that up. And But I will say, and I'm just throwing out devil's advocate here. I'm not saying I get behind this. Microsoft Microsoft showed a lot more newer games. They might be smaller experiences, more indie stuff. Sony, but they showed a lot more games that are exclusive or first on Xbox than Sony did here. Sony, with their E3, they in the past few years... Uh, They've been very much more AAA focused, and we got to look at all those big AAA mm-hmm. exclusives. So I'm not saying I get behind of Microsoft. Yeah, they, it was more mm-hmm. of quantity over quality for what they had. Um, I'm just kind of throwing out devil's advocate there for people saying that. Yeah, Sony showed game after game after game after game, but so did Microsoft. Microsoft it, did the same thing, and also yeah. I mean their thing was was I mean what an hour and a half, mm-hmm. whatever long it was. So Sony's was like an hour. Yeah. And it still showed nothing but non-stop games. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I, I like... For the most part, I like the way that the, how Sony's been doing their, their their E3 press conference the last two years. I think the the I probably the can't call it a press conference. I call it a showcase. Like Sean Hayden said, it's a yeah, showcase. Uh, the, the way that they've been presenting things the last two years. I, I do like that. I'd, I'd say my, my only issue with this kind of game after game after game after game thing is I feel like well, well A I feel like some things will get get buried in that sense but then the other thing is you can make anything look good with a fucking trailer and it's like the only real demos we got were Days Gone and Spider-Man and so at least to me I would like to see more yeah, we got a little bit stuff. of God of War but it was, but it's within like a, a thing where it's like quick cut, quick cut, quick cut, quick yeah. cut. It's not like here, gameplay start, go. Which I feel like in general there was a lot less of that this year. There was a lot less demos, and it. I 
that's what I like more. Like, I was hoping for a, a, a live Call of Duty World War II demo. Like, that's what I want. And it's like, and, and, and like, like I said, that's what I want. So that just kind of brings me down a little bit because, like I said, again, as other, as other games have proven with, like, The Division and Watch Dogs and what's... Dragon Age 2, going back a ways, but... Yeah, Dragon Age. Um, yeah, I could I could go on listing, but a lot of games you can make any fucking game look good, in and, such thing. and that's kind of like been my thing. And so it's yeah. like, I, it's some of the things are cool, and and with like the announcing Shadow of the Colossus and and Monster Hunter and some of the PlayStation uh, like VR stuff was cool, but then like a lot of the stuff like Tyler said, a isn't coming out this year, and is also like. Hey, remember this thing that we talked about last year and that we also haven't talked about since then? Yeah, here it is again. Like, I feel in some ways I don't know, this, this kind of bothers me a little bit. Just a little bit. Personally. Go ahead, Frank. I don't, I don't really have much to say. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, if you remove the, the PlayStation VR stuff, they showed one brand new game. I'm just like, like Shadow of the Clauses is a remaster, then they showed us everything that was, you know, from last year and stuff. Horizon and Uncharted, their smaller War. DLC or standalone adventures, and then uh, Monster Hunter World is the is you know, the new brand one. new experience. And even then that's a that's a major franchise that's been around for a while, has a lot of uh, has a very like stuff, cult so. following. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying this conference was bad. No. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. Oh yeah, I'm not saying And the games they showed looked Great. Like, that's, right. that's not what I'm saying. It's just that, like, again, that's why I watch E3. It's it's easier, and I think, e- even though I, I even, which I'm going to sound like a hypocrite, which I'm sorry, even I just, because like, it's just a couple minutes ago, but it's it's easier to make me like a game better showing gameplay mm-hmm. than to sit here and be like, here's a trailer, here's here's a, a doctored up, you know, version of the Max, game made pretty yeah, shown on PC with on ultra settings or with, whatever with, with locked with locked uh, tech graphics that you can't access anywhere else <laughs> yeah. dogs. Um, but you know yeah. I feel like the status quo really didn't change between this year and last year for Sony last year they went because they didn't even really push the PS4 Pro last year they said here's our games go this year they also said here's our games let's go I'm okay with that. I wish they would have gone a little more in depth with certain things like Days Gone perhaps go a little more in with that because it seems to be a very big undertaking in terms of like zombie games and making it feel unique and different in a market that kind of has been flooded with zombie games in recent years with The Last of Us and Dead Rising and Daisy and state of decay and whatever you know could they have done a little more to make the conference a little more interesting sure but la- I feel like last year was at least in terms of overall hey there's a whole much there's new new higher performing systems coming here's what we've got for that this year Microsoft focused a lot on the Scorpio or the Xbox One X, which it's now called. Sony just like, yeah, we've got the PS4 Pro, but here's the games that you're going to be able to play on Sony. Yeah. Last thing I want to say. I have enjoyed this year's E3, and yes, Nintendo still has to go, but I'm not expecting anything mind-blowing from them. Uh, in terms of the, oh my fucking God, th- I can't believe this is real... Look at this brand new IP. Look at this brand, this franchise coming back in this massive way. For me, hasn't been there besides Anthem. Anthem is the only game where I'm just like, oh my fucking yeah. god, this looks amazing. And and yeah, it's E3. I know they they put you know a nice fresh coat of paint over everything with that. But you know, I'm not saying there there's great games that I'm excited for. You know, but like last year we had. You know, God of War. We had the Spider Man. We had uh, fucking Crash Bandicoot coming back. There was a lot, no a Crash lot Bandicoot of shit. This year, surprisingly, well, I mean, it's, it's coming that, out. That's coming out yeah. like it's kind of like a couple. But weeks I'm surprised before. they didn't like take advantage of the hype. 
but yeah, I mean, I feel this E three has been a little bit more tame. Yeah, which is probably good. Yeah, because I mean, E three has been incredible. I think definitely at least since twenty thirteen. Like every single year, I'd say probably my favorite year, year is twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen might be my favorite. I mean, some people were expecting the Year of Dreams three this year, didn't quite happen. Yeah, I just yeah. I mean, in in some ways, I mean, Sony's still probably my favorite press conference. But then besides that, surprisingly, probably Ubisoft. Ubisoft, Ubisoft had a lot of interesting stuff. Like, like it was actually like cool, and then surprisingly after that, he, well, either EA or Microsoft, kind of mm. probably Microsoft and then EA, and then I still might put Sony. Or maybe even then before. I mean, I yes, I'm slightly disappointed by theirs, but what they showed looked way better Impressive. to me than just about everybody. Else. I mean, g- g- give me some time Definitely to sit and think on this before I give a final. Yeah, we'll come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like because like I mean, yeah, I just saw it. So I'm like, oh yeah, Sony. It's like, I mean, like I was telling you guys earlier, the joke I heard was in order to win E3, especially after Microsoft's yesterday, all Sony had to do was show up, and they showed up in a big way. I would say. Yeah. T three, Nintendo's still gonna go. We'll be talking about Nintendo later in the week, probably. Uh, but check out our EA and our Microsoft stuff. Uh, check out then the PlayStation report, which will be up on the channel later. And yeah, thanks for watching. Go enjoy E three. Another E three in the books, basically. Yeah. yeah, I'm stuck. Peace. Ah.